Hi, my name is Ali Shesova. I am an academic from the University of Reading in the UK, and over the next few minutes, I would like to talk to you about the impact of crossover frequency on a power supply's transient response. This short video is aimed at engineering students and is a small extract from Texas Instruments University webpage seminars. Please visit our website for full details. Okay, so in the last video we talked about Bode plots, how and why we plot them, and what to look for on a Bode plot in order to assess a stability. One of the parameters that we looked at was our crossover frequency. Although we discussed crossover frequency in terms of a stability, in fact it has a big impact on the transit response of our power supply in time domain. Typically, the higher the crossover frequency, the faster our transient response, and the lower the crossover frequency, the slower the transient response. So, if I need a power supply that recovers very quickly back to steady state after a unit step change in the load, then I need to have a higher crossover frequency. But if you remember from the previous video, in real life, there's an upper limit on how high I can have a crossover frequency without going unstable. In particular, we talked about the phase margin, and as you increase the crossover frequency, you get lower and lower phase margins. So there is a, there's a finite limit of how high you can make the crossover frequency. TI's Webbench Pass Designer tool allows you to design power supplies, and also it allows you to change the crossover frequency. Plus, you can simulate in both time domain and frequency domain. Therefore, it's an ideal tool to use in order to get a feeling of the impact of these parameters in real life in both domains. So, if I go to my PowerPoint presentation here and I look at the Bode plot, here I have got the Bode plot of a voltage mode buck converter. The red trace is my gain plot. The blue trace is my phase plot. From the previous video, we now know what to look for on this body plot in order to assess the stability. But in this particular video, I'd like to show you the impact of changing the crossover frequency on, on the actual transient response. So I know that my crossover frequency for this particular power supply is around 22 kilohertz. That is the point where the gain plot crosses the 0 dB axis. And if I look at the block diagram, here I have got my plant, I've got my PWM, and I've got my compensate, just compensated just like the previous video, where the plant is an LC filter, the PWM just gives me some low frequency gain or DC gain, and the compensator is a inverting op amp with a series of uh, uh, capacitors and resistors that places my poles and zeros and controls the position of my crossover frequency and phase margin. So, what is the impact of changing the crossover frequency in real life? The great thing about Webbench Power Designer as an educational tool is that it allows you to simulate a real power supply in both the frequency domain and the time domain. You can change the crossover frequency in frequency domain and look at its impact. For example, in this particular one, I can see that I have got a crossover frequency of around 16 kilohertz. This is a direct simulation from Webbench. So here I have simulated it in uh, frequency domain, and here I have simulated it in time domain. And a crossover frequency of 16 kilohertz for a load step going from just above zero to around 6 amps at 16.5 kilohertz of crossover frequency gives me a transient response of about 220 microseconds. That means after giving it this loader step, my power supply recovers in around 220 microseconds. Now, if I go back to Webbench and re-simulate and redesign my power supply for a lower crossover frequency, I can see how this will change the transient performance in time domain. So let's have a look at this one. It's exactly the same power supply. All I have done is I have changed the crossover frequency from 16 kilohertz to around 2.7 kilohertz. From the theory that we've studied at the school and the previous videos, I know that because my frequency is lower, I expect my transient response to be slower. So with 2.7 kilohertz of crossover, with exactly the same load step, going from a little bit above zero to around six amps, 
I now get a transit response of 600 microseconds, which is significantly slower. So the conclusion is that the higher the crossover frequency, the faster our transit response in real life. But if we have a crossover frequency which is too high, we're going to risk instability, and therefore a good compromise needs to be found. In this video, we demonstrated the impact of the crossover frequency on the transient response. In the next video, we will demonstrate the impact of the phase margin on our transient response. To find out more, why not join us in one of TI University program's many hands-on seminars. Thank you very much for watching, and for more information, please follow the link below.